Hey, Ben here at Pixel Portable. I hope you're having a good day. It's been 142.3 days, or five months, since I received my MiU Mini. Oh, what's in the box? Get that shit out of here! Slap your peepers on this bad boy! And in that time, I've played it a lot. From all this playing, I've developed my own preferred loadout and finalized an opinion, so I guess it's time I talked about that with you. Hey, don't you want to talk about me some more? Nobody cares about you, Animal Kaiser. The video views speak for themselves. Please, just give me another chance. Begone, filthy old world entertainment peasants, for it is me, you, your king and savior. Oh no. <laughs> it's been a wild five months here in Thailand since I first received my Miu Mini, and it's had a lot of use, some of it in interesting places. If you follow this channel, then you know that I'm a big portable gaming fan who's definitely bought too many devices for a trip around the world. But more importantly, you know that I retired my Odroid Go Advance in place for the MiU. So the question is, was it all really worth it? If you've never seen a MiU before now, I can sum it up for you. It's a small but powerful, super budget friendly device that'll emulate a huge array of ROMs all the way up to PlayStation 1. While better and more expensive devices do exist, you still can't find anything as good for this size and low price. So, how and where have I been using mine five months on? Well, the simple answer is, I've been using it everywhere and anywhere where I have a waiting time. It might be in the queue for the bank, waiting at a cinema, waiting for a taxi, and most commonly for me, during the taxi ride itself. The device is so pocketable that you can play it anywhere, and as someone embarking on a lot of travel like myself, it's a permanent addition to my backpack. Or pocket or sling bag. The device is just so small that there's no excuse not to have it on you. I originally thought I'd play it a lot at home too, like in bed or on the sofa, but still naturally I use my 2DS XL and Switch for those roles. The MiU has however fully replaced my much more expensive Game Boy Micro, simply because it's more comfortable to use and just has that bigger game library. As you'd expect, my friends use theirs in different ways too like during awkward awake times when caring for a newborn baby, or outside the school gates waiting to pick up their kids, or some, much like I used to, play a little on their toilet break at work. It's so small that the use case for this device is huge. Pixel. Let's talk a moment about loadouts. I don't know how commonly discussed they are, but here's mine for the Mi Mini. My current ideal loadout is basically three items with an optional fourth. One, a microfiber bag. Having such a pocketable device is great, but it comes at the obvious risk of loose change, keys, or that 15th century claymore that you've got scratching around in your pocket, leaving a big dent on the screen. To avoid this, you can put the device in a case, basically anything that'll fit a deck of cards in should work on this, or you can use a bag like I have, just to keep the device in top shape at all times. Number two is headphones. The MiU speakers are at best okay, and at worst, a mess, depending on if you've got ones with dodgy speakers, which is a problem I've heard can happen. So much so that some members of the community have bought new ones and replaced the old ones. This is, however, a problem that I've not experienced, nor any of my friends, so I can't really talk too much about it. Anyway, having a good pair of headphones alleviates this problem, and it helps save people around you from having to endure the slapping bangers that the retro games can offer. Such as this. <laughs> And this. Maybe, maybe this? Anyway, for me, my favourite wired in-ear headphones are the KZ ZSN Pro X Hybrid Drivers, which are some of the best value for money in-ear headphones I've ever owned. I'll throw some links in the description, I'm not smart enough to have affiliate links on YouTube yet, so these links are just pure kindness and being helpful and all that stuff. Number 3 is a 10,000 mAh battery and USB cable. I carry this for my phones, 2DS XL, Switch, and MiU. It's not enough capacity for all of them, but since this is a standard day carry, it's enough for when I get caught off guard and one of the devices gets low. 
It's really worth noting that from what I remember, the Miyu cannot be played while charging, so always keep it topped up to save you from that risk. Number 4 is a sling bag. This is the optional one that I use to carry all the stuff in. But if you ditched a battery, you could easily pocket the Miyu, the headphones, in its little bag, and for most people this would be more than enough. And that's my loadout. It's pretty simple, but it needs to be for a small device that you want to carry everywhere. A microfiber bag, a decent in-ear set of headphones, and a backup battery all in a sling bag. What I'd like to see is a 3D printed, or just straight up manufactured, grip attachment to give the device a little more width for when laying in bed. So, five months on, what do I like? Pixel. Well firstly, I like the size. Always will, it's perfect for travel and the screen is crisp, dense and full of life. It's low weight. And talking about size, seriously, it's only a little bigger than my digital audio player. I also like the wide array of games playable on the device. Want to play Pokemon Emerald on Game Boy Advance? Sure. Alundra on PS1? Sure. Pinball Kirby on the Game Boy? Go for it. Choice is king and you have it all here. I have the Model 1 of the Miu Mini, and I actually like this older model over the new transparent version, and the reason is quite simple. It has an easily replaceable and hot swappable battery. The newer models changed this system, and while they have a slightly larger capacity, I think ultimately it's a bad move. Now, not native with your purchase of the MiU, but I like the custom Onion operating system. I think it's well made and super easy to install. Having the power button to be the quick save and shutdown is a fantastic addition for people like me who are constantly on the go. So I guess this leaves the question, what do I dislike? Pixel. I dislike the R1 and R2 positions. I often hit R1 as well when trying to hit R2, but that's usually fixed in key binding. I do dislike that my D-pad makes a weird feeling and noise sometimes when pressing the right direction. I mean it works fine, it's just it feels off. Maybe that will come back to bite me later. I do dislike the idea of not being able to play while charging. And the reason I say the idea of is because the battery is a champion and I've not been caught off guard yet and run out of battery. I can probably assume the reason you can't play it and charge is the device would probably get too hot. That would be my guess, but I'm no expert. Oh, well, I was wrong. I was wrong. I was very wrong. So wrong. Now, aside from those two minor things, I really love this device, and I'm incredibly happy with my purchase. I'll always plug it to other people when I see them, because for the price, I just think it's incredible value. So, should you buy a MiU Mini if you haven't got one? The answer from me might surprise you, and the answer is yes. Pixel. I think it's time for a Quick Recommendations for MiU, which is a segment where I quickly recommend things. Pokemon Pinball, did you know the MiU Mini has an inbuilt rumble feature? It's a pinball, but we're collecting thrown into the mix, giving you lots of replay value before you 100% this game. Harvest Moon 3, just make sure you play this game as a guy, otherwise you'll play as a female, and the game will end as soon as you marry, much like how some women must feel that their life ends upon marriage. If this is a deal breaker for you, then you should roll back to Harvest Moon 2 and see what games like this did to inspire games like Stardew Valley. Legends of Zelda, Minish Cap, makes sense to go small on a small device and this is the smallest Link ever gets. Alien Storm, side scrolling beam up meets first person shooter in this crazy but fun adventure sci-fi game. Bubble Bubble, this addictive casual and overall lot of fun game, I used to play this on an arcade cabinet when I was a small human but now I play on a tiny screen as a big human. Aerofighters 2, Aerofighters is a top down shooter where you can play as an ace pilot dolphin called Spanky who flies the YF-23 and there's also a character who's a one year old child prodigy and detective called Bobby and if that's not enough reason to take a look into this game then I don't think there's a reason they exist. Jay Cocoon, a timeless JRPG monster taming game that's full of charm while also being very distant with more familiar takes on the genre such as Pokemon. Once you make it through the very slow start, you'll find yourself addicted and immersed in this very cleverly built world. Tarakan 3. Catchy music, nice level design, and adventure spanning a fairly unique environment. Tarakan is a timeless classic and 3 is the best of them all. Uh, and breathe. 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 And breathe. Breathe. Pixel. If you have any game recommendations yourself, or loadout tips and tricks, let me know in the comments as I'm genuinely interested. If you made it here into the video, comment level select to show your love confuse the people who didn't make it this far, and lastly, as a little bonus for sticking around, here's a small spoiler for what's coming up. Thailand, you were fun, but it's time to start the adventure. <laughs>